Hi everybody, good to see you. I'm back from vacation. I had a great time down in Houston with my daughter, Carrie Ann. Um, helped her to get into her house and that all went very well. I'm really glad we had the opportunity to do that. Missed being with you, of course. And um, also, I'm really thankful to uh, staff members who stepped up and did devotions while I was gone. If you haven't seen any of those, you can find them on, on uh, um, YouTube. It's really fun to see them uh, give some of their devotions. Today, uh, we're going to be in uh, Second Chronicles, and we're going to be looking at um, Solomon. And I want to read this text. It's uh, chapter 3, Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse 14. Across the entrance of the most holy place, he hung a curtain made of fine linen, decorated with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and embroidered with figures of cherubim. So this is the cloth that um, Solomon puts up in the temple to, to separate the uh, Holy of Holies, which uh, had in it the, um, the Ark of the Covenant, which had the Ten Commandments, and other objects were in there. This is the Holy of Holy Places. Today, uh, I should say Sunday in my sermon, I talked about... Um, Holy, what it means to be holy. The word, the Hebrew word for holy means to be separate or separate or cut off. And so uh, this area literally is being cut off from everybody else because it's so holy that if they got in contact with it, it would probably kill them. Um, we're, talking about, um, we're talking about Elijah and his call, and he comes before God and he just sees the hem of God's robe, and, it, and right away he realizes that he's a sinner, is a man of unclean lips, and I live with the people of unclean lips. And so an angel comes over after he's made his confession and puts a coal on his lips and uh, says, you are now clean. And then right away, God says to him, well, I got this work to do. Uh, who am I gonna do to get that? And um, Elijah says, here I am, send me. And um, so this holiness, you know, when we come in front of God's holiness, um, we're going to see our sin. That's one of the things holiness does. It tells, shows us right away. It magnifies our own sin. And, uh, and when we, our sin is magnified, then one of the things God wants to do right away is forgive it. So that's a part of breathing as Christians. You know, it's confessing your sin and knowing that God is always forgiving us as we confess. And that's what happened to Elijah, and that's what happens to us every day. And, you know, the only people that are going to have a problem with God are those who don't think they have any sin and aren't thinking they need to confess it. Well, that's, that's the only way, you know, that's a great way to stay out of heaven and to stay out of a relationship with God is pretend that somehow you're bringing a lot to the table. Um, but when you uh, see God, when you, when you see God's holiness, the thing you're going to see first is your sin. And you're going to confess your sin, and God's going to forgive you, just like he did with Elijah. Well, this curtain later on um, has an important part with Jesus, and that is um, in Matthew 27, verse 50. I want to read out of that. It said, Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the temple, in the sanctuary of the temple, was torn in two from top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split apart, the tombs opened, the bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. Well, we t we've read this before. This is a real weird passage where Jesus dies and, and right away a bunch of people in a grave who were holy or who were uh, godly end up rising from the dead and walking around the city sort of like zombies, but not really. Well, this curtain now gets divided. That Solomon put up is now uh, God tears in half. Now, why does God tear the curtain in half? Well, could be two reasons, could be more. One is now we have access to the holiness of God through Jesus Christ and his suffering on the cross. That's definitely what's going on here. But I think another one, another thing's going on here too, and that is the Holy Spirit is now out of the Holy of Holies, and He's out into the world. 
So the Holy Spirit is now moved out. It's moved out into the world, and it's going to be affecting people's lives. I think both are probably true. But this uh, this curtain thing is really fun because um, now uh, we are part of the holiness of God because as we confess our sins, as we receive forgiveness, we're receiving God's holiness as well. Remember, God says um, that uh, we are to be holy as he is holy. I think that's in Leviticus. And um, so that's what God wants for us. He wants us to have his holiness uh, and have it be a part of our lives. And he goes to great lengths through his son to make that possible for us. So you are holy. You have the Holy Spirit within you. And that makes your body a special sacrifice to God, as Paul says in Romans 12. Well, God bless. Have a great day. I hope this has helps you to know you're holy. Remember that in your daily life that God has made you holy. And uh, so act like you're holy. That doesn't mean you're going to be, uh, you know, like a, I don't know, like a person who's real uppity. It means you're going to be down to earth. It means you're going to be honest. It means you're going to be real. But it also means you're going to know you're forgiven and loved by God. God bless. Take care.